Welcome to the Systems of Life Dream Time to Real Time podcast. It's also Lyndon Anlizark's Mastery podcast. Now, this is an interesting one. I'm actually recording a background for a episode here, or this might just be the standard background for many episodes. I've sent this podcast off to half a dozen people, so people with 140 plus IQs, someone has gone to the Olympics, someone from overseas, okay, male and female, and it's quite interesting at the moment. I'm getting the thumbs up excellent. That's the best you've spoken. It's the clearest you've articulated this uh, men's health initiative for this one. I've been recording female health initiatives as well. Teenagers, okay, talking about animals, evolution, high performance, low performance. So it's been very, very complex. And I just thought I did take the feedback on board because if you've lobbed into my work here, Gender is a very touchy subject in Australia, and it's interesting that I actually have to record a background before a podcast. I feel that sort of pushed back into a corner, maybe a little bit fear-based, maybe a tiny bit coercively controlled, Mm, but I'm going to do it anyway. I took that advice on board, and I thought, no, I'll just quickly articulate this because I've recorded a two-hour version of my background, and that's a few years old now, but I've got that all sitting there, over 110,000 words in one file, just sitting there, ready to go, and I have 10,000 high-performance notes on high and low performance in culture alone. So but my background is fairly complex. I'm just going to quickly go through it, okay? We can talk more in depth about it in the future, but I'm trying to clear the pathway from any roadblocks you may have or other people may have and so that they can justify not actually listening, okay? And what I did over the years to try and protect men and women at work is I created uh, culture tests, trying to explain this while I was defending them to their managers, say, when they were pushed down anxiety, depression, or suicide pathways. And I created the man or message, hey, you're focusing on the man here, but the message is that that person is bullying and that could send that person over there to a cemetery. So I had to develop systems. I call them systems in life, okay? And they're part of a culture test series. And for females, I I call that one the female or function test. Hey, you're not listening to the female, okay? Uh, Sorry, you're targeting the female. You're not listening to the function of her message. So I just want you to know that it's a genuine intent to help people. It's taken about 10 years to think about how I could do this without getting assassinated. It's been an extremely volatile and very emotional and and in many ways a a topic that's gone backwards more than gone forwards in many areas. So I just want to make sure that you know that everything I've seen from the front lines as a problem, well, then I went backwards from that with solutions because my job was to do that. Okay, it's a very, very rare skill set, I think, and very rare job to have. So let me go through this whole stack of dot points I actually have in front of me right now. Okay, so I've lived in the outback of Australia where in regions where Crocodile Dundee was filmed, okay, a just indescribable way to spend part of my childhood and I've spent another 10 plus years there now. It was just, I don't know how you explain it, a profound genius level culture, love, friendship, caring for country, caring for people, caring for culture, pretty much kind of the opposite to the dog-eat-dog world, just chasing money in a city. That's, if I was to explain it very quickly, that's that upbringing. You're all one. There is no skin color. And that's, and if you've never felt that, I can't describe it. You're just going to have to feel it, okay? So that's that outback part of it. And why I say this is because many people live in cities around the world, and the outback gave me a opportunity to study a completely different culture and then have used those questions and that philosophy and those principles back towards another system to take the best of both worlds and move forward. Okay. That was pretty cool. I like that. And in business, we call that high performance. And if you've read a lot of books like I have, you will know that's actually a high performance system to be used, okay, uh, to prevent being in a silo, echo chamber, or being brainwashed. But I've also lived in the country too, so not quite as remote, but in the country where small town communities pride in your football team, okay, but enough peace and quiet animals. It's just um, plenty of outdoors, plenty of wide open spaces, so a beautiful way to live as well, which is different again from the next version of my life, which was in the city with uh, incorporations, okay, as an entrepreneur, but also as a person helping people physically and mentally, and then also training people at high level, the highest levels on the planet. So going to the Olympic Games or the the World Championships of Athletics, Commonwealth Games, Pan Pacific Games, Rugby Seven, say Cricket Academies, Brisbane Lions Academies of Sport, Muay Thai Kickboxers, SAS Elite Military Candidates, 
eight-year-olds on tennis courts, 80-year-olds in their homes, training people in parks, training kids at school. It was an epic time and a hell of a download that was for information. And during that period, I started reading at the age of 11, started programming at the age of 13, started writing assignments on the difference between high and low performance in the day at 14 or 15. Okay, started mapping my brother's Olympic career at that age and made some significant changes, which are still correct today. He went off the three Olympics, so I was training with one of the world's best athletes in every single training session. And I saw an entire athletic career from start to finish without having to read books about it either or study, which I did. And that's very rare as well. Okay, and I use that as a high and low performance misunderstanding screenshot if anyone starts questioning in that area. And a lot of people don't understand what high performance is okay. It's a completely different language, a completely different skill set, and almost no human I've ever met in the mainstream actually understands it. And that's a, that's a cool thing because I have a whole series for that as a part of all my future books. So during that period, I was studying, I uh, studied business, I studied sports coaching at university, okay, top 50 university in the world there, University of Queensland. Half of that was performance psychology and half performance physiology. And while I was doing that uh, as well, I was uh, writing, I was questioning what was happening when I was seeing anxiety, depression and high suicide zones. So I had access to some pretty smart uh, professors at the time and access to literature. And that was a really cool thing for me. So I was sort of questioning what was happening in the mainstream while I was in high performance as well. Mm, and that's fairly rare, I think. So coaching, coaching high performance athletes through that series, core stability as well. I was qualified in high performance athletics coaching, suicide prevention courses, three of them, personal training, which is actually extremely high level. It can't even be called personal training. I was caring for someone for their entire week broken, say in the corporate sector or in the mining and resources sector. So that's a couple of decades now I'm talking about here. Uh, actually a couple hundred thousand hours. And then I was developing patterns to help people and I was watching the patterns to help people and then starting to map them. And that was that early foundation at the same time as being an entrepreneur, which is a completely different way of thinking to a steady nine to five person. And I noticed after decades of thinking like that, I'm a billion thoughts down the road compared to the people still stuck in that system. It's not a competition, but I actually am paying credit to that for clearing my mind and that started the whole uh, personal development book uh, scene, the business book scene there, reading a lot of them in that era. Okay, so I just want to show you that I went through a lot of different eras uh, that I use today as a sieve to actually sieve out information to keep the gold, okay? And I'm studying mental health now, okay? It doesn't doesn't finish at the age of uh, 48, and I have another five, 10 years of study sort of mapped out. But the study is not where I learned everything either. And the study is not where I really specifically was able to pinpoint the problem. The problem is at the earth's core that I dove into with a deep dive and say, when I was mapping the negative health cycle and the positive health cycle, I started writing my own notes under the systems of life. It's a high and low performance and I have 10,000 of them in one file alone. And then that negative health cycle was very, very clear to me. It's that cycle I'll always talk about. You have an A4 page in front of you in portrait mode and you head up the left-hand side of the A4 page, halfway up the left-hand side of that page, you draw a line down to the bottom right-hand corner and a slippery slope. The bottom right-hand corner is a cemetery, okay? And then I started looking at visual, virtual, and verbal violence instead of physical destroying people for VK. And I created an acronym of BADS, bullying, anxiety, depression, divorce, domestic violence, death by other means, like crashing a car from fatigue, okay, or that visual, virtual, and verbal violence, stalking and suicide, bad, all right? Across the page is holding the line that the zero harm vision mission statement, code of conduct, policy, and procedure at your workplace should be doing, but 15 years of parliamentary inquiries in Australia prove that that's not happening, okay? And some of the worst physical and mental health stats on the planet at our Bureau of Stats also prove that. So I'm not short of stats. You can go and have a look at them. The reason I'm doing this clip is, is we have some of the worst men's health stats in the planet, all right? And I'm not happy with them anyway as a human, and I have every right as a human to defend or help people progress, okay? So billions of thoughts, 2 million word journey, 300 headings, 400,000 hours, at least 10 different backgrounds, including filming animal behavior in Kakadu National Park and Arnhem Land, where Croc Dundee was filmed and filming, say, 65,000 years 
of evolved culture mapped through the six seasons there. And that was something special. I can't even explain that. And while I was doing that, I was a cultural and natural world tour guide. I'm also a qualified tour guide to talk about the natural world here and original culture, okay, in Australia, which is a genius level culture. And if you weren't good at the first Olympics, which is survival, well, you didn't survive, okay. So we can uh, learn from original people all around the planet. And I, I love learning from original people. And, and I can't recommend highly enough to learn more from original people wherever you're from. At the same time, I was filming crocodiles for over 10 years. So crocodiles' lineage goes back to the dinosaurs a couple hundred million years, a brain maybe the size of a cigarette lighter, humans' brain the size of a watermelon. <laughs> and I started spotting crocodiles behaving better than men and women. <laughs> All right. So if I had a laugh on tour when I delivered that, but it's uh, much closer to the truth than you think. So while this was happening, I doubled down on books again in the last 15 years and podcasts, learning from people smarter than me in different areas. Otherwise, you just get to see what you don't want to be. More systems of life mapping. I had my 48th birthday. Thousands of pages of systems. Thousands of videos I've recorded like this. Okay, just recording, recording, recording. Every day writing it, systemizing it to move humankind and the natural world forward. I'm not right or left wing. Okay, it's straight down the middle, head of the eagle. So please, please don't let people try and suppress, repress and depress this message. Okay. I'm trying to get across the genuine intent here. Why I'm doing this is to help this clip, men's health. I have other clips on women's health, other clips on teenagers' health. Okay, I've just spent time mentoring teenagers and they they need a lot of help, all right? Mm. It also takes a lot of courage to do this because this is not really the field I may stay in, okay? I can have a, a very enjoyable life in high-performance sport or out with original people on country, genius-level culture learning, or filming animals and learning from the amazing animal culture, seriously. So it's a very safe uh, environment those other environments for me this one is the most risk i have okay sorting out the basket case that is the planet at the moment but the version the short version here of my bio is not a competition okay it's to prevent the chop liver a t-shirt <laughs> that i've been wearing sometimes where people will criticize me and say what gives you the right to talk about health linden i had a guy lean up on a bar when I used to drink alcohol. I haven't had alcohol for about five years. Not that I drank much anyway. A guy I just met that night while I was enjoying a beautiful Lafroig Scotch whiskey and said that to me. And he was, a, I think, a skydiver. And I just went, wow, that's how touchy this subject is. We have we have something going on in Australia, which I'll talk more about in the future, okay, the parliamentary inquiries and our statistics at our Bureau of Stats prove that, all right, there's no debate there, go and look at them. But the intent is genuine. No one should be saying, Lyndon, you're not allowed to talk about this topic. There's no reason to stop me talking. There's not one viable reason anyone can put forward because I could turn this around and say, well, unless anyone in the world has my background, I'm banning them from talking over the last 400,000 hours, okay? <laughs> and bearing in mind, though, uh, some people start a podcast and their business is drunk using swear words, all right? So let's just be, you know, take it easy, all right? Everyone relax. And if you've never relaxed, well, you've never really lived, okay? That's another quote I use on cultural tours when I'm out with people that are all wound up. But that's the short and sharp version of my background, you should understand who I am, the genuine intent to move humankind and the natural world forward. These are all linked headings. So these are all linked to 300 headings, which is linked to 2 million words. Like I've got one folder with that 110,000 just sitting there. And over the years, that'd be a couple hundred thousand sitting in other folders. Okay. So it's all there. It's going to be released whether I'm alive or dead. Okay. There's no stopping it. Okay. The intent is genuine. The background's big enough. I don't need to do any more than I've done, which is more than nearly most people, more than anyone I know anyway in this area. And the thing is, is the, the, it's at the core of the problem. I went backwards from the problem at the front line. And you can't get this information at university because you're not allowed to torture people to get it. So you actually have to be there. And I thought about the people at the hotline centers, the call centers that didn't have the info I did. That They do a tremendous job, by the way. 
But I thought, oh, right, so you see one grain of sand on the whole beach, but I see all the grains, and I see the grains when they're all happy and they turn up, and then I see if it's four hours or 400 hours or 4,000, that person's destroyed, not wanting to be here anymore, and then I'm the guy that mapped those systems and took on the corporations and removed psychos and narcissists from work sites so that your children have a safer planet to live in, you have a safer planet, and now I'm taking the gain off evil people so that they can't do this to you and coercively control you, okay? So it's quite complex. It's taken me three months just to get to the stage where I can talk like this. I have to be at my highest level. There's a lot to remember with this one. There's not many people in this field I can learn from. That I c- There's a lot of people that can articulate it in different ways, some way too complex, and then others you see they don't know enough, and others are behaving in a very primal way. And I th- sat there thinking, oh, they're going to probably regret that in 10 or 20 years. So there it is, part of the systems of life dream time to real time. This information is in my head. I know it will help people. I know it's right at the cutting edge though. So if developmentally you're not quite there yet, you haven't been taught this or your country or your culture hasn't had this problem yet, okay, you may actually learn about the tidal wave and tsunami that's coming. If you've already solved this, I always say this when I talk, please contact me if your culture is way ahead of ours, all right? It's not a competition. Our culture will lead the world in a few ways and yours will as well. Okay, we're dead last in a few areas too. Probably mammal extinction, I'd say we'll be right up there. But in the end, remember, this isn't a competition at the moment, but I am looking for the best culture in the world that helps men and women, okay, and children, animals, all right? I'm just interested in this area. I have a brain that just ticks like this. I might as well use it. I need this stuff out of my head to help then I'll decide whether I stay in the industry or not. But I'm not going to let anyone push me out of the industry. I'll just decide what's sort of good for my health and what isn't, okay? I can easily escalate. You can tell by the tone of my voice. I'm very relaxed today because I already know the ending of all this because I've already tested this at the front lines where it counts. The Black Hawk down, remember that analogy? Generals out of touch, people getting shot to bits on the street because the generals didn't have the plans at street level, okay? And these are all street-level plans, okay? Thank you. That's enough justification. I hope I don't have to talk like this anymore. I want to be direct (laughs) to the point and get moving to help people. And I need your support to do it. But enjoy the series. And if you want to fund me in the future, please do. The more work I can get out, the more people we can all help. Thank you. Welcome to the Systems of Life, Dream Time to Real Time. My name is Lyndon Anlisar, and I'm really interested in moving culture forward, humankind forward, please. My intent is genuine. And I've done a lot of study, but I'd like your feedback. So I thought, oh, look, we have a fair bit of bias here in Australia. We're right down the bottom end of the planet. And we have a whole planet with 8 billion people on it. So there's a few different perspectives to be had. And there's a lot to be learned from every culture I found. Yeah, in every country, and especially as a, a cultural and natural world tour guide, I really enjoyed conversations with people that cared about humankind and the natural world and leaving a legacy that's better. Okay. So the question is, because we have a, a catastrophic oh, failure of a system really out here for men's health, men don't live as long. We have huge problems with, say, obesity, anxiety, depression. We have six suicides a day in Australia, which is just not acceptable, okay, including suicide being the biggest killer of our 15 to 24 year olds, which is, you know, we're a first world country. So I'm, I'm talking about uh, first world countries here at the moment. It might not apply to third world. So I'll get to that later, please. But what are our strengths and weaknesses are here in Australia. So what is the healthiest and the safest country and culture you've seen for men in the 2020s? I'd like to know who, what, where, when, why, and how they did it, please. So the healthiest, the safest country for overall wellness for men and culture, who, what, when, where, why, how did they do it? Also, the most unsafe country for men in the world or culture. Now, I'm referring to visual, virtual, and verbal violence against men. Physical as well, if it's there, but I'm really concentrating on that other area. At the moment, it seems like that other area, and unless I develop an acronym like 4VK, visual, virtual, and verbal violence kill, people don't pay attention to it, but it's a silent killer. And I think we're going to be hearing a lot about it. I'm going to be talking about it for the rest of my life, okay? If you've never heard it before, well, now it's on a radar screen. And I want to take that tactic that people are using in an undercover fashion at the moment, like a silent war. I want to take that tactic 
off the table for them to use and do evil with. So that's my intention, okay? First, you have to spot it on a radar screen, then have some solutions to prevent it, okay? To move forward into a, a high performance culture, belonging, autonomy, competence, fulfillment, and meaning if you're into wellness that way, okay? Or you might call it just being highly evolved, all right? So the feedback I want, please, I can't travel to every single country in the world, spend decades there, okay? One person can't do that. But if you want to help society, if you've traveled to Australia from overseas or you live in Australia now and you see the strengths and weaknesses, now's your chance to stand up. But I'm very, very worried for men's health at the moment. There's a lot of initiatives being done for women's health and that's really fantastic and brilliant. But I'm just sitting here thinking, well, we have 80% of the suicides in the country are male. There's something is up there, okay? Not talking about it is one thing, that's for sure. And if you can learn more, I think I can add my piece of the puzzle to the equation, as you can. We're one of 8 billion, okay, working together to move humankind forward. And I'm just sitting there thinking, no, I'm, I think I know what I've seen. I know what I have to hand in for my mental health assignments. I know what I had to do and program out on site for anxiety, depression, suicide prevention, okay, and very intense workforces, you could say, like the mining and resources sector and remote. We have a fair few uh, mental health problems there, okay, but they have also safety systems and people in charge of that as well uh, in the, the wellness field. So they actually have some solutions there and programs there, which many in business don't have. So please don't criticize them uh, with a cheap shot, okay? Yes, they've got the problem and probably because they had the problem, they had to have the solution. But in general, they're a billion light years ahead for helping people at the workplace than most businesses I've been in, say, in your capital cities, okay, to give you some perspective. So the intent is to help all people, families staying together, marriages staying together, okay, children having parents, all right, apart to hopefully try and prevent this near 50% divorce rate we've got out here in Australia and endless court cases, okay, and we all know what happens to split families. The stats are fairly damning just there. And if you have ever been affected by this, please see your doctor and seek help, okay, but your chance is right here and right now to help. To help, we have to know what's going on. When we know what's going on, we can provide solutions moving forward, okay, through the five-link chain of life I've developed, home, community, work, online, and natural world, okay, part of 300 headings I'll be releasing, part of 2 million words, boiled down from billions of thoughts over 400,000 hours with 10 different backgrounds. Highly complex, okay, and I'll be talking to people from all around the world, it's really triggered my thoughts that every country and culture has a genius within their systems and our Aboriginal culture here in Australia is a genius level culture too. Out on country with elders is something just profound, okay? And I've also been filming animals for a long time to just question all the human literature as well. I think we're fairly heavy on that side. We've had 15 years of parliamentary inquiries on human behavior in Australia to give you some context on all the atrocities we haven't even remotely solved yet. None of us are perfect. That's why I started with no perfect human, okay? And I also started with why, well, are humans worth helping? Am I going to be attacked for helping people, which proves we have a very aggressive culture. So it's going to be very, very interesting, the journey, but I'm not going to sit back and let that group tell us who here, humans who want to help humans, that we can't talk about this topic because they're very willing to talk about any topic they want and point at problems and other groups doing every single day, okay? And the media is fueling that, but I'm sitting there thinking, well, what about the other group? <laughs> Aren't we in this together? Are we trying to build a better culture together? Okay. Yeah. So it's a bit of a interesting situation I have here in Australia, but I've had a few people that I've talked to from overseas say, hey, we haven't had that type of behavior for 50 years or hey, that was sorted out 10 to 20 years ago in our country. You guys are, you're off on another tangent. And I've actually been talking to them about my work. And I've been advised that I'm going to struggle to explain what I've seen because people from overseas won't believe it. They, they won't be able to comprehend that it's happening and they won't believe it. And it might take years. And if it takes years, we may have more deaths or more torture visually, virtually, verbally in those years. And my aim is to reduce that. So that's been a, I listened when people told me that and I said, right, okay, that's, that's super interesting. And it's triggered this clip today where I thought, oh, 
I might just ask all the good humans out there or the humans that want to do good and realize we've all done bad and want to help give them opportunity to, to teach me. I learn from everyone, kids, even animals. No one knows everything. What's the safest culture in the 2020s in the first world for men? Who, what, when, where, why, and how did they do it? Like that really interests me. I want to go to that country and I want to visit that culture and I want to learn, okay, to be able to help a lot of people. What's the most unsafe culture you're seeing at the moment in the world for men in the first world regarding visual, virtual, and verbal violence towards them, which will just create suppression, repression, and depression. And we know where that path ends, okay? Don't have to be a rocket scientist for that. Mm, quite interesting. Who, what, when, where, why, and how did that country or that culture end up getting it wrong? All right. So you only have 15 years of parliamentary inquiries in a country and mental and physical health statistics like we have in Australia, if you've got a lot of plans wrong over a lot of years, 20 to 40, okay? And so I'm interested in the next 20 years. This is part of my 20-year plan to move humankind and the natural world forward. And I'm serious about it. And remember, it's very risky for me to be in this field. I can get paid to film crocodiles, work with children, be in high-performance sport, going to the Olympics, you know, other areas that are very enjoyable, by the way, and really trigger my brain. But I've got this brain with this information in through seeing atrocities and through seeing profound genius level cultures at the other end. And it's just triggered me. It's an area of interest. You're alive once. You can help once. You might give a legacy once. You might help one person for one second in your life. And that person's still on the planet because of it. Okay. Mm. So I hope you see the genuine intent. I want to know the best culture in the world for men's health and safety and overall wellness, okay? Who, what, when, where, why, and how did they do it? And I want to know in your observation, opinions, or experience, what you considered the most unsafe culture in the world for men visually, virtually, and verbally at the moment. Yes, that would be very, very interesting. And look, I've spent a lot of time recently reading comments in many different areas on all sorts of different topics. And even if you lob in a comment 5,000 or 50,000, I've been helped by those comments and I thought I wanted to relay that to you because it's nearly impossible for anyone to answer and reply back to that many people. But if you are comment number 50,000 or 5,000 and someone lobs into the chat then and sees the clip in years to come, you can actually help that person, okay, by printing something good you've seen in a culture that helps men, okay, and maybe printing something where men need to be uh, have on the radar screen in a country. So one country might be suffering a problem now that another country won't have for 20 years. So you might be that person that enlightens them and say, look, you don't want to go down that negative health path where we've got this wrong here and these laws changed in our workplace because of it. So it's cool stuff. Like it really is. If you want to move humankind forward, these are the topics to do it because it's about half the world's population. It's about your son, your nephew, okay, your brother or your father or your teammate. All right. Yeah, so I, I see a huge problem here. I think I know how to solve at least my part of it, but I just want to learn from people smarter than me in many other areas from many evolved cultures around the world because I've had the privilege of meeting you on tour, like in Kakadu National Park, World Heritage listed for its natural and cultural world value, 65,000 years of culture sitting right there, genius level. And I realized once I started doing that reading, reading even more, studying at university, that there are a lot of cultures ahead of us in Australia, but Australia was also leading in many ways in other areas as well. So there's no perfect human, by the way, or all culture. And I thought, yes, that's, um, it's something that's just ticked away in my mind. It's something that's there, something that I want to do. And I'm glad I've grown as a human to be a better human in that area. And looking back at my mistakes, I was thinking, oh, I wish someone taught me that earlier. I wouldn't have wasted half my life doing that. Or I wish someone told me, if this behavior here in a culture ends up down there on the negative health pathway, and you don't want to be on that for even one more second, then you have to be. But I hope you care about humans. I hope you see the genuine intent. It's a really frustrating topic for me at times. This is about as settled as I am for it. <laughs> oh, I laugh because I've recorded this topic so many times. It's because of fear. There's straight out fear because of all the predators out there that want to stop me from talking about good things. And that then will identify a terrible culture regarding men's health or anyone's health. You're not going to fix female health if you don't fix men's health. You won't fix teenagers or children's health if you don't fix men's health. It's part of the whole 
equation. Leave that equation out. You don't have an equation and you'll never solve the equation. No mathematician would give that to me. I can't hand that into my mental health or our psychology or physiology assignments, all right, as the best way forward because they just look at me and say, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Look, I've done it a little bit lighthearted. It's a really serious topic. See your GP if you need to. Mental health. Have the phone numbers of all the mental health support organizations in your phone in every country. That's why I'm not going to give those details out now because it's only one country specific here in Australia. Support someone if they're in support. Be there as a friend and a family member. And together, if we get this right, it's part of the overall equation to build a better life, to be healthier for you to stop thinking about yourself, to start thinking about others while thinking about your own health as well. And that way, I think in a very disjointed period that I've seen in my life in the digital era, the last 20 odd years, I'm just worried we've got a tsunami of health problems coming through incorrect actions, policies, and procedures and misunderstandings of what's actually happening. So the way forward is to learn from smarter people than you. We love learning from people smarter than us in high-performance sport. We love it. That's just how we're hardwired. But I've realized in most of my life travels, over 400,000 hours, very few people can handle that ego-wise. And I thought, wow, that's um, that's a That's a high and low performance misunderstanding. That's for sure. It's a health and wellness and safety misunderstanding. Mm. It's a head in the the sand approach. (laughs) And it's not the best way forward for all of us. But I think that's enough for this clip. I'm really happy with it. I hope I put it out today. My name is Lyndon and Lizard. I will need your support with this because this topic is one where you may be coercively controlled, discriminated against, banned, or what's the other one? disgraced is the word they use so that they can stop you talking about good things. And I think that's all all branded right wing or left wing, which is very interesting. So social media outlets, please don't let people set me up like that or you. Okay. This is a straight down the middle, moving everyone forward. And we're not going to do it with horrendous men's health statistics. Okay. And this is part of a 20 year plan to move humankind and the natural world forward. It's a genuine one. And I would like to know the best safest, healthiest culture on the planet for men in the first world, okay? Or maybe in the third world, it's healthier. Let me know if it is. And I'd like you to educate me on zones where you might have felt unsafe because of visual, virtual, and verbal criticism and violence, say 10,000 times at a workplace that leads all the way down the same pathway, okay? But it's not as easy to see as physical violence because that leaves marks, okay? Therefore, if it's not put forward like I'm doing it to put on the radar to stop people from doing it. People, evil people especially, are going to keep doing it. And I'm worried they're going to do it to a niece and nephew, you know, your sons and daughters, brothers, fathers, sisters, everyone. So it's uh, remember, it's a learned behavior from a nasty person. So they'll do it to anyone or any gender. And if they're confident enough to do it to big, strong men, my point is they'll do it to anyone. So you can see the angle I'm coming at here and what I'm trying to identify but I've realized in my research, I could be talking to people that are 50 years behind or 20 years behind or that nasty. They don't want me to talk like this because they want to keep bullying people. Okay. And that's not going to go anywhere. And knowing that we've all been turkeys, pelicans and wombats in our life at times, there's no perfect human. Okay. So let's get past that low level talk and argument. Don't try and distract from that. Think of the goodness you've done. Think of the goodness you can do by supporting what I'm trying to do here in men's health. Thank you for listening.